Excuse me, I invite you to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6. We'll take our text from 2 Kings chapter 6. I want to talk to you about how to recover the cutting edge. How to recover the cutting edge. Talking about the power of God upon our life. Second Kings chapter 6, would you stand with me for the reading of the Word of God? I hope you're not too hot. It's turned down, it's doing all it can. Maybe I'm just hot-headed, but I'm fogging up my glasses, and I can't read without them. So. But I certainly thank each one of you for being here. Let's look into the Word of God. 2 Kings chapter 6 begins this way. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell uh, with thee is too straight for us, or too small for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Will you bow with me, dear Father? We, we bow before you once again. We thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings thereof. And God, we just come to the time now when we hear from you, when we receive your word. And I just ask you to be our, be our, 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 our teacher today through your Holy Spirit. Just use me. Help me to say what you won't say and strike from a memory the things that you don't want say it, God, that you would be our instructor, that we would learn and grow, that we would see your presence, your manifest presence here among us. I think we've already seen your manifest presence, but uh, I just ask God for you to, uh, that when each person leaves, they can say, we know that we've been in the presence of God today. So I just ask you to speak your word to us, lift up hearts, encourage, and uh, Father, save us all. There may be somebody that hears. And knows not Jesus. Help us to uh, present Jesus in a way that they'll be able to understand and receive Him as Savior. We ask it all in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. The school of the prophets had grown to the point that they needed to provide new facilities. As they are in the process of cutting down trees to build their new home, one of the prophets loses his axe head in the Jordan River. Now what I want you to make note of is that he had lost his cutting edge. We may look at this story and wonder if there is anything here for the modern church. Well, I believe that there's plenty here for us to learn. You see, the axe head represents the power to get the job done. The Lord left us with a commission, didn't He? To go into all the world, and that starts here at home, and teach the things that He's left for us the, 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 the message of the Word of God to make disciples and to baptize those then that are converted unto Him. But we need His power to get the job done, don't we? So that's the lesson. No man can chop down trees by flailing at them with an axe handle. It takes the sharp, biting power of the axe head to eat through the wood to fell the tree. He needed the power to get the job done just like we do in the church. We need to realize that without our cutting edge, that is the power of the Holy Spirit God, we will never be able to serve the Lord properly. We'll never be able to accomplish all that we could if we were operating in His power. And so we want to make sure that we're operating in the power of God. We need God in His power to get the job done for His glory. Now as soon as this man feels the axe head fly off, he cries out in despair. He knows that he cannot continue what he's doing until he recovers the axe head. 
I'm convinced that many people walk through this life thinking that they're filled with the Spirit and don't even realize that they have lost His power in their life. It might be because of sin. It might be because of doing things uh, uh, self-willed and in the power of the flesh or whatever it is. But I'm convinced that many Christians walk through life thinking they're filled with the Spirit and don't even realize that they're not. Can I prove that in Scripture? I sure can. Look at Samson. Samson was a man that was able to do great strengths of feet, great uh, feats of strength, I mean, through the power of the Holy Ghost, God. The Spirit of God would come upon him, and he was able to, I, I don't think Samson looked like a big muscle-bound, you know, bodybuilder. I think he just looked like an ordinary guy because the Philistines couldn't find it, couldn't figure out where his strength lie. They couldn't see it, no, you know, muscle bulging everywhere. And they, anyway, so Samson was a man that was able to do great things when the power of God was upon him. But as you know, if you know that story, whenever he gave his secret and allowed, and allowed the, his hair to be cut and lost the power of God, he got up and said that he would shake himself and at other times and uh, defeat the Philistines and go out. And he was not able to. And the Bible says that he knew not that the power of God had left him. One of the saddest verses in all the Bible. It can happen because it can slip up on you, my friend. You didn't get up one morning and say, you know what, I don't want the power of God on my life anymore. No, you just begin to dabble here and to dabble there in sin. Or you just begin to do things in your own strength instead of relying on God. Or whatever it is that happened in your life to allow you to get in that place. But I'm asking you today to come back to God to admit that God, I am the one that needs your power. I'm the one standing in need of your presence, God. It's not somebody else but me. And admit that today and allow Him to restore you. You see, if we're going to do anything great for God, it will only be in the power of His Holy Spirit. You and I can't do great things for God in our own strength, in our own power. But we can in His power. You see, I think, I think we've already seen a great thing go on here today. With Cooper, I believe, I, I believe one person coming into the fold is a great thing. And so I commend his parents, and I commend all those that, that, that t teach him and taught him. I commend those where he went to vacation. By all the ones that had any part to play, I commend them for that, for being an instructor and an example to him that he might know the realness of Jesus Christ in his life. You know... Sometimes folks are trying to live for God and do His work in the power of the flesh. I want to read you a story from Revelation chapter 3. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see as many as I love. I rebuke and chase, and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith under the churches. Here was a group of people that were trying to do the work of God in the power of the flesh. And the power of God was not resting upon them. We don't want to be like that. We want to admit our lack and we want to invite God to come back and to show Himself. Not just be here, but manifest Himself here. Bless God. In our presence and in our lives. So are we concerned about the presence of God and the power of God being in our midst. Friend, we're always congratulating ourselves on the fact that where two or three are gathered together in His name, He is in the midst. The Spirit of the Lord is in us. If we show up at church, He shows up at church. Do you get that? 
I'm not just talking about his presence being here. I'm talking about his manifest presence being here. I'm talking about where he not only shows up, but he shows out. But he shows himself real. That when you leave this place, there's no doubt in your mind that you've met with God today. That you've heard from God today. That he's spoken to you in your need today. You see, I believe, I'm not smart enough to address every need that's here, but I believe God is. And I believe that, that He can speak to you in your need where you're at every time we come into the house of God. I believe that. May the Lord help us settle for nothing less than the best He has for us. When this man realized that the axe head was gone, he immediately told Elisha what had happened. He confessed the fact that he had lost the cutting edge. By admitting that the axe head was gone, he was also admitting that it had become loose and he hadn't taken the time to address it. He hadn't hammered the wedge in a little further and, and, and tightened up the axe head on the handle or whatever it was. See, sometimes that's our need. Maybe we've realized that we aren't as close to God or aren't at the place where we used to be or could be, but have we taken the time to address the problem? See, I think one of the hardest things for any of us to do is to admit that we have lack, to admit our lack. We want everyone to think that we're on the top of the heap that we need nothing, like that church at Laodicea, that we're in control. Where are the honest hearts that will cry out and say, I need the power of God operating through me to get the job done. I'm not sufficient on my own, but I need your help, O oh God. That it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of your power. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of a word from you today. It's me, O oh God, that came here to have a need met today. We're the honest hearts that will pray that and cry that before the Lord. We need to relearn the path to these altars, for one thing. I'm glad that we have altars. We hadn't discarded them. But we need to learn, relearn the path to them. Pouring out our hearts before the Lord on our faces, on our knees. We need Him and His power in our midst. But there's a price to pay. Part of that price is confessing our lack. Our inability to do it on our own. We will recover the cutting edge as individuals, as families, and as a church when we first come to the place where we can honestly admit that we cannot do it, but God can. I can't do it, but I know you can, oh God. I need your power in my life. We must find that place of total and absolute dependence upon God and His power. And when we do, We'll see His manifest power. We'll see His manifest power and presence in our life, in our home, and in our church. In His church, where He allows us to serve and work and, and honor Him. We will experience that. I believe it. One of the reasons this man is so upset about the axe head is because it didn't belong to him. He had borrowed it. He had borrowed it from someone in order to be able to help in the building project. In able to be able to work for God, he had borrowed a tool that was necessary. Now, now losing an axe head may not seem like a big deal to you and me. We can run down to the hardware store and buy a new one. But it wasn't that simple for this man. First of all, if he could afford an axe head, he would have had his own. He wouldn't have had to borrow one. Okay, So he probably couldn't afford to replace it. Secondly, it wasn't as easy to just to run down and get one. I refer you to a story in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13. You don't have to turn, just listen. 
Now there was no smith. Listen to this. Now there was no smith. That means a metal worker, right? There was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords and, or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his colder and his axe and his mattock. Yet they had a file for the mattocks and for the colders and for the forks and for the axes to sharpen the goads. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the land of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. Now, at this time, the Philistines enjoyed a monopoly on iron and smithcraft, a condition that remained until the days of David. So was there a scarcity of iron products? Yes, there was. It wasn't as easy just to run down and get a new one. Plus the fact that he had borrowed a tool would mean that he would be required to replace said tool, which he obviously couldn't afford to do. The fact that that person who lent him the axe had confidence in this man, trusted this man, and he didn't want to betray that trust. I think the lesson for the church is crystal clear. The power to serve God does not come from you or me or within our human nature or human ability. It comes from the Lord above. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, He's told us where we'd get the power to do His work. 1 and 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And He goes on and tells them then that they're to be witness for Him. So we're to receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon them. Talking to the early church. Thereby to us. Therefore, we need to be especially careful with the power entrusted to us. May we never take for granted the power of God, the Spirit of God upon us. May we never come to the place where we act as though nothing can hinder His power in our life because we've seen that it can. God help us to never violate His trust. Just as surely as the Lord gives His power, He can retract it. I'm not talking about Him taking away His Spirit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the manifest of power in our life. <clears throat> and then, I want to look at Elisha's response to the situation. He cuts a stick. Show me where you lost the axe head. He shows him. He cuts a stick and throws it into the water. When he does, the axe head floats to the surface. A miracle occurs when human means are abandoned and divine help is sought. When we come to the place where we acknowledge the loss of the cutting edge, there's only one way to get it back. First, there must be a tree involved. You notice what Elisha did? He cut a tree or cut a stick and threw it in. There's got to be a tree involved. Now, of course, the tree I'm talking about is the cross of Calvary. The cross where our dear Savior died. He died for the sin of all mankind. That includes you and me. He died for our sin there. So we've got to come to that cross, first of all, for salvation. Realize that we can't save ourselves. We can't be good enough. We'll never do enough good to work our way into heaven. Listen, if you think you're going to stand before God one day and your good deeds are weighed and your bad deeds are weighed, and if your good deeds outweigh your bad, you're sadly mistaken. It ain't going to happen that way. If you go to heaven, it's going to be through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, and that's the only way. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So through the cross of Jesus Christ, we can be saved. But beside that, beyond that, he also told his own children, John, speaking by the Holy Spirit, told his own children in the faith that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In other words, restore the power and the manifest presence of God in our life. <coughs> Truth. 
trusting a stick to make an axe head float sounds crazy, didn't it? Don't it? But it worked because it was God's way. That's what I'm telling you about salvation and about maintaining a close relationship and fellowship with Him. It works when we do it God's way. No other way is sufficient. That's all I'm saying. Friends, one of the primary steps in recovering the cutting edge of power in the church is to return to God's altars. When the church deals with her sin and the way between us and the Lord is cleared of all obstacles, we can count on the return of His power and His glory in our life and in the church, in our families, in our homes. One last thing I'm going to say in closing. Notice verse 7 says, last thing it says about this man, that he put, put out his hand and took it. When the axe head floated, Elisha said, pick it up. He put out his hand and he took it. He committed to receiving by faith that which the Lord had done. This may be the end of the story as far as the biblical record is concerned. But I submit to you that it's not the end of the story that happened that day. This man reached out and got that axe head. And I just believe he put it right back on that handle. And he made sure it was, it was secure. And that it was tight. And he went right back to work. Doing what the Lord had you know, allowed him to do. He had recovered the cutting edge and he was able to do what needed to be done. God has power available for those who will pray the, pay the price and reach out and take it by faith. When we come to the place where we're tired of the same old, same old, where we're tired of moving from defeat to defeat to defeat, and we say, I want to enjoy your victory, God, then we put to work the power that God's enabled us with and do in His power His work and see, and do it, by the way, for His glory and His honor, not for our own selfish glory. We'll see God work and do great things. He will give us back the power to do His work in His way. How committed are we to the idea of experiencing God's manifest presence and power in our life, in our family, upon our home, in our church? So I ask you personally, where's the cutting edge? Is it at the bottom of the river? Have you lost it somewhere along the way? Just caught up in life and slipped away? Take the steps that we've been given today and return to the place of power in God's work and in God's service and with His help. I also want to call on you in Jesus' name, to receive His salvation. Jesus went to that cross because He loves you. He pleads with you today because He loves you. He paid your sin. He paid the price for your sin and made a way for you to be saved because He loves you. Won't you embrace His love? That's all He's asking. Receive my love. Accept my, by, by faith the amazing grace that I'm reaching out to you with unto salvation. Will you do that today? You say, well, I, maybe I, I don't pray. I, I don't know. Listen, just admit to God that you're a sinner. As Cooper said a while ago, all of us have sinned to come short of the glory of God. That includes me and you and all of us. Just admit that before God. Say, I can't save myself. I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Forgive me, cleanse me. I trust in you, Jesus. You alone to be my Savior. He'll save your soul. By the authority of the Word of God, He'll save your soul. He'll change your life. And you can move on to victory and get out of that cycle of defeat. Will you bow with me, dear Father? We bow before you once again. We thank you for your precious Word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your manifest presence. Also, we just ask, God, that every one of us would be real with you, would be honest with you, and uh, be willing, God, to say that it's me. It's me, oh God, in need. It's me that need a word. It's me that needs your power. And, uh, and, uh, 
and, and, and allow you to restore us, God, to that place of power in your service. We ask it all in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Will you stand?